We've got a uh, proclamation for National Wear Red Day. So who's down, coming down for that? Paulette, is there anything you're not involved in? <laughs> well, seeing Alex following you, you really don't care who you let in on the organization. <laughs> well, we're glad you're here. Yeah. I was instructed to wear red, and y'all are coming down here to get red, and you Boy, howdy. Okay. Cardiovascular diseases kills one in three women in the United States, yet 80% of cardiovascular diseases may be prevented. Cardiovascular disease and stroke kill one woman every 80 seconds in the U.S. An estimated 44 million women in the United States are affected by cardiovascular diseases, and 90% of the women have one or more risk factors for developing heart disease or stroke. Only 36% of African American women and 34% of Hispanic women know that heart disease is their greatest health risk compared to 65% of Caucasian women. The American Heart Association's Go Red for Women movement motivates women to learn their family history and to meet with health care providers to determine their risk for cardiovascular diseases and stroke. And women involved with the Go Red for Women movement live healthier lives. Go Red for Women encourages women to take control of their health heart health by knowing and managing these five numbers. One, total cholesterol. We're not gonna, this is a pop test, but we're not gonna have you turn in your paper. You need to know these. The top, uh, your total cholesterol, your HDL, that's good cholesterol, your blood pressure, your blood sugar, and your body mass index. Now, therefore, pursuant to the powers vested in me as the mayor of the city of Corpus Christi, I do hereby proclaim Friday, February the 2nd, 2018, National Wear Red Day in Corpus Christi in recognition of the importance of the ongoing fight against heart disease and stroke and urge all citizens to show their support for women in fight against heart disease by commemorating this day by wearing the color red. So go red on February the 2nd. So thank you, ladies. And who's the spokesperson? Thank you so much. Um, my name is Erin Wilder, and I'm the executive director for the American Heart Association. And we do want to encourage everybody to wear red on Friday. That's just about celebrating all of the women in your life and um, bringing awareness that heart disease is the number one killer of women. Um, and we we definitely want you to share on social media hashtag Corpus Go Red um, to make sure that we're we're building that awareness as well. Yourself? Marcy Rodriguez. I'm Brittany Sandback, and I'm with the American Heart Association. Paulette, and we are always looking for more Go Red women and Go Red men. Alex Garcia, I'm a Go Red man, uh, but it's about education, and this is what we hope to be able to accomplish this week. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. Let's get a get a picture here. Okay, I'm going to ask uh, Council Lady Opal to help us with, uh, with this one. Uh, Dr. Maria Luisa Garza, please present yourself and your family and friends. And anybody else that wants to join her down here in the celebration. You can only come down once, Alex. Sit down. <laughs> I'll come
Come on down. No, no, come, come on in here. No, no, this way. No politic in the city hall. All these people are coming to your house for dinner tonight, so be ready. All right. Council member Debbie Lindsay Opal is going to read the uh, uh, commendation and help us celebrate this. You got it? Well, it's my honor to uh, read this proclamation. Dr. Maria Luisa Garza, in recognition and profound appreciation, we commend you for your educational excellence. Dr. Maria Luisa Garza has a demonstrated passion and love for all children, especially those who are considered at risk. Her commitment began in 1976 as she embarked on her career in education, working in a variety of positions. I think we saw you everywhere, I'm not sure. Ultimately, her passion inspired action. In 1980, she co-founded the Gulf Coast Council of La Raza, otherwise known as the GCCLR, a tax-exempt organization, nonprofit organization, the charter affiliate of the National Council of La Raza in Washington, D.C. Since its inception, GCCLR has operated educational and social services for troubled youth and their families, including what is now known as the Dr. M. L. Garza Gonzalez Charter School. In 1993, under her leadership, the school, then named the Academy of Transitional Studies, achieved accreditation from the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools and began accepting students from the community that had been removed from their school campus due to disciplinary reasons. In 1996, the school applied for and was awarded charter school status. It was built in 2002 and officially opened a more than 60,000 square foot campus at 4129 Greenwood Drive. As the founder and superintendent of the Dr. M. L. Garza Gonzalez Charter School and CEO of the Gulf Coast Council of the Raza Inc., Dr. Garza has positively impacted the lives of countless students and their families. Dr. Garza lives her passion for education, holding a doctorate in education from Texas A&I University, two masters of arts from Corpus Christi State University, and a bachelor of science from Texas A&I University. She holds many professional recognitions and has generously donated her time and expertise to state, local, and national organizations, especially those improving the lives of children. Dr. Garza has celebrated many milestones through her years of service, and 2018 marks another as she retires from her position as superintendent of the Dr. M. L. Garza Gonzalez Charter School. Her passion, commitment, and inspiration leave a legacy for her students, faculty, board, and all of those who have worked with her through the years. Congratulations. I don't know if you have much wall space left, but I want to give you one more thing that you might be able to have frame and put on your wall in, in appreciation of all you've done. And uh, you've been here a long time making a positive contribution and the city's better for it and we appreciate it. And we just hope whatever you do in retirement, you enjoy it for a long, long time. Good to see you. You have anything to say? Appreciate it, please. Yes, I do. I am here to <laughs> receive a commendation, but I do want to share this minute, this time with all the people who accompany me here. Because without them, and without the help of the community, we would have not been able to achieve what we have achieved. Nobody can achieve a dream alone. And I have the city council people, your predecessors, to thank for being on my side all the time. And I want to really Call for an applause for attorney Armando Cavada. Thank you. And uh, our past DA, Carlos Valdez, and his wife, who worked there as a counselor. I want you to know that Armando Cavada was the attorney 
who did all the legal paperwork for the Gulf Coast Council of La Raza to be what it is now. And I want to appreciate that very much. He did, he did it absolutely as a volunteer. Thank you, Mando. <laughs> Mr. Valdez and his wife, Maria, worked there in the shelter for abused and neglected children for a long, long time. She's a wonderful people. He is a wonderful person, and I have them to thank as well. Please applaud for them. Thank you. And my son, my CPA son, Ernest Garza, <laughs> who has always been my advisor, my support, and the main person who stands by me regardless of whether it's a good or bad situation. Thank you, mijo. <laughs> my staff who is here, my staff has always been diligent with me. Let me tell you, nobody, not everybody makes it in our school and in our social services because they're hard. They're hard, the, the people that we serve need a lot of attention, a lot of help, a lot of patience, and some people cannot comply with the requirements. But this is my staff, and they hold the place together for everybody who wants to come in. It's not difficult to say that many of the teachers leave at 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. And I tell them, please don't leave. Well, look, you're here. And I said, yes, but I, I'm going to leave for the night, so please leave. I don't want you here um, working this late. Tomorrow will be another day. So Judge Valderas has always been on our side, and I appreciate that, too. I have my board members, two of them, because uh, three of them, because two of them. Uh, many, many of the others have uh, jobs and could not get off, but Mr. Mario Munguia, my chair, has always been my supporter. And uh, Larry Olivares, I say, our retired sheriff, and Mary Alice Martinez, right here with me. And so I'd like you to recognize all the people who were influential in having our school, who had got uh, got honored by the Texas Education Agency for 20 years a continuous success and continuous help for students who need extra help. Yolanda, Yolanda está aquí? Yeah. Pardon me, Yolanda. Okay, Yolanda as well is a board member. So I wanted to share this with everybody. And to City Council, I want to thank their understanding that we needed a facility that would be the Corpus Christi facility for students who need extra help in counseling, drug abuse counseling, brain, uh, prevention of too early childhood, pregnancies, and uh, we just have graduated many, many kids that would be in the correctional institutions right now. And they are now, I was telling somebody earlier on, teachers. They are people who are workers and good taxpayers. But I have one, and I say that I have one who went through Harvard School. He's a lawyer in Houston, Alton Hall, if anybody knows him. That, that's the star of the whole programs. So thank you very much for allowing me to speak and tell everybody how much I appreciate it. Mario, the chairman of the board, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't think she's retiring. I think she's just getting started. <laughs> so let, let's get up, gather up here for a picture.
All right, our, our last event today is uh, going to be a fun one. This is the recognizing the queen contestants for the 83rd annual New Aces County Junior Livestock Show that was held last weekend, two weekends ago. So uh, it, if you ladies would come up here, and if I get close to your name, I'll be real pleased. Hopefully I'll get real close, but I may mess one or two up, or three or four. But we're glad you're here. And Ms. Vaughn is here, and uh, she, she is the chaperone. <laughs> and, the re and, and I'll tell you a little secret. I won't tell you, while I'm reading this, now, you, where are you going? OK. Right. So while I'm reading this, you be listening to what I'm saying, but then you see which, figure out which one of these might be related to her. I'm not going to tell you. All right, we're glad you ladies are here. Thank you very much. The first New Aces County Junior Livestock Show Queens Contest was held in 1963, and Patty Wilson, who represented Bishop 4-H, was crowned queen. The Queens Contest uh, consists of categories including pre-interview, western wear, where the young women introduce themselves, evening wear, and talent portions that they are scored on by a panel of judges. The top five contestants, having the highest combined score, are announced then and interviewed, re-interviewed. The judges then select a queen, and one through four are runners. This year's queen, hello. Um, this year's queen contestant had 17 contestants that attended Banketti, Bishop, Cal Allen, Flower Bluff, Tolosa Midway, and Veterans Memorial High Schools. Congratulations to the 2018 New Aces County Junior Livestock Show Queen, Rebecca Pledgens from Cal Allen, FFA. Where are you? All right. I, I was turned around. I didn't see the queen. I'm not that dumb. I didn't see the, I didn't see the, the crown. Sorry about that. Uh, first runner-up in Miss Congeniality, Ann Powell from London 4-H. All right. I think there's a movie, Miss Congeniality, or something. I mean. Okay. Uh, second runner-up. Oh, here we go. Caitlin Havelka, is that right? Lone, Lone Star 4-H, where are you? Did I get close? I was, I was all right, y'all keep trying to figure out. Uh, third runner up was Emily McClendon, New Aces County 4-H ambassador. Fourth runner up, Aubrey Zickfus, Zickafus, all right. Uh, Chaparral 4-H Club. And top, who are you? Huh? She's not here. Uh, top talent, uh, Genevieve Torres, Flower Bluff Padre Island 4-H Club. She's not here. Well, that's a long way from the island. Uh, the following young ladies also participated in this year's Queen Contest. Uh, Maya Fulbright, Bishop FFA, is she here? All right. Uh, Kylie Hamkin, Annaville 4-H. Matson Kappa, Tolosa Midway, FFA. Riley King, Traverlin 4-H. Where is Traverlin? Traverlin 4-H. It's a group. I went to another state during the summer to spend time with visit with 4-H. Oh. Pretty nice. Traveling. Well, I thought that, but I thought, well, maybe there's a little town called Traveling. I don't know. Uh, Maria Lopez. Did I get that right? Maria? Huh? Lo Lopez. Uh, Run in JM 4-H. I'm not going to ask if that's a running group. Sounds like it is. Jacqueline McClendon, River Hills 4-H. 
Uh, J.C. Monti, C&T 4-H. Uh, Courtney Robertson, Bluntser. Jimmy Ellen Savage, is that right, Jim? At Ben Ketty. <laughs> Carolyn Underbrink, Tejas 4-H, and Madeline Williams, uh, Veterans Memorial, FFA. <laughs> so they represent not only New Aces County Junior Livestock Show, but they represent their family, community, school, and 4-H, or FFA in the chapter. Once the Queen contest is over, the girls are busy participating in the parade, livestock show judging, award presentations, and the Blue Ribbon Auction by helping line up uh, exhibitors, assisting judges in the arena, distributing awards, taking photos with ribbon winners, helping buyers complete their bid sheet, that's real important. And re uh, they're very busy and tired when the show's over, but it's rewarding. Life-changing experience teaches them responsibility, leadership, time management, and builds confidence in their ability to speak publicly along with being a great role model for the future. So we appreciate you girls getting involved. And we want to congratulate all of you. And any one of you could have been the winner, but and that's why they tell me if you get in politics, two things you don't do is judge beauty contests or food cooking contests. <laughs> so don't ask me to be a judge in either one of those because that gets you in trouble. But uh, we congratulate you. Let's give them another round. That Junior Livestock Show is a tremendous uh, program. And you, uh, she's going to say a few words, and then you identify who you're related to. Okay. Um, first, I just want to say I am so honored that we are recognizing this organization because it doesn't get enough coverage. It really doesn't for the county. This is a unique group of young people that participate in this show every year. They start, right now they're starting for next year. They start when they're very young. My granddaughter and grandson started participating, I think around third grade. But they not only learn, they learn how to manage their money. They need, they learn responsibility. They have integrity and great character. And one of the most important things is you will not hear any of these kids not say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. You don't hear that much anymore. So if our future is represented by here, we're in good shape. I want to announce, talked about Miss Penny. Can she say something, please? Because she is in charge of these ladies, and she runs a really tight ship. <laughs> When my granddaughter and one of her friends were sitting on the stage, short story, they were chewing their gum. Well, all she had to do was kind of point and tell them. My daughter was sitting in the audience, and she swallowed hers. So, <laughs> Thank you, and thank you so much for the opportunity to commend these young students today. We really appreciate you allowing us to come out. They're a great group of girls. Some of the other girls could not be here because they're busy with dual credit classes. They are at the Fort Worth Livestock Show. They're just a lot of things because these are the cream of the crop in the 4-H and FFA world in New Aces County. So thank you so much. And I'm going to let Becca say something. <laughs> Thanks. Um, just on behalf of all the Queens contestants, we really appreciate y'all letting us come here today. And thank you for highlighting us because we truly do believe that the Nueces County Junior Livestock Show is really something to be proud of. And we're all really proud of each other and we're proud to be part of this. So thank y'all.